bit, I'm going to show images of the posterior pituitary with its bright spot and ectopic mirror hypophysis. And you might remember from med school that the posterior pituitary has a different embryonic origin than the anterior pituitary and that these two structures interlock to form the pituitary. The posterior pituitary has a neuroectodermal origin and is derived from outpouching of the floor of the hypothalamic region, whereas the anterior pituitary is derived from Redcus pouch, ectoderm in a region that's also going to give rise to the palate, and Redcus pouch goes up and invaginates, and the pituitary stalk is formed by the neuroectodermal posterior pituitary tissue and the anterior ectodermal pituitary tissue wrapped around it. On T1-weighted images, the posterior pituitary can be identified as a bright spot. On T1-weighted images, fat, protein and blood is hyperintense and the hyperintensity of the posterior pituitary is caused by proteins. There are two proteins that are stored in the posterior pituitary and formed in the hypothalamus, more specifically in the supraoptic and paraventricular nuclei. And these two hormones are vasopressin or antidiuretic hormone and oxytocin. And when antidiuretic hormone is formed in the hypothalamus, it is part of a much larger protein. And this much larger protein is transported in vesicles to the posterior pituitary and then released into the bloodstream. And this large protein causes the T1 shortening of the posterior pituitary. And um, you can see that it splices before being released in ADH and then to other proteins. The other hormone that is released by the posterior pituitary has a very similar molecular structure to the antidiuretic hormone, that's the oxytocin, and the first picture of the Two circus artists were the Atherton twins, they are identical twins, and that's the same for oxytocin and vasopressin. They are formed by gene duplication, so in evolution, a gene was duplicated, and one of the gene copies kept producing the original protein, and the other one had some mutations and produced a slightly different protein. And vasopressin and oxytocin are highly evolutionary conserved. And as mentioned in the vlogs about focal cortical dysplasia and the mTOR pathway, if something is highly evolutionary conserved, it's very important for the organism. We know that the high T1 signal in the posterior pituitary is caused by these vesicles with these large proteins because there have been many studies in the 90s and around the millennium. For example, this one in radiology 1998, where they looked at 14 rabbits before and after water deprivation and they also measured the antidiuretic hormone concentrations and if that went down also the um, uh, signal of the uh, posterior pituitary uh, decreased. You can imagine that if there's incomplete caudal extension of the infundibulum, which is the case in what we call an ectopic neurohypophysis, that these vesicles with these large macromolecules are not transported to the normal region and then you can identify the high T1 signal in the hypothalamic region.
And you typically see it near the median eminence on the coronal slices. Children present with hypoglycemia in the neonatal period and growth problems because of the lack of growth hormone. Some of the hormones are secreted near the median eminence in the vasculature, so there's something that reaches the anterior pituitary, but the anterior pituitary is typically very small. Ectopic neurohypophysis is associated with septo-optic dysplasia, Kalman syndrome, Bessler invagination, and Chiari-1, so always check the midline structures, and there are several genes that have been described, but the exact mechanism of the um, pathogenesis is not yet known. In the differential diagnosis is the previously discussed hypothalamic hematoma, the very rare hypothalamic lipoma, and in adults you can think of a traumatic stalk dissection, either after a high impact trauma or post-surgical. Sometimes you do not see um, the posterior pituitary bright spot. This can be pathological, but it can also be normal, especially in males and especially with increasing age. And in neonates, you might not only see high signal in the posterior pituitary, but also in the anterior pituitary, because around birth, there are a lot of hormones in the anterior pituitary um, present as well. And you can see in this term neonate with an MRI at the age of seven days that there's not only high signal of the posterior pituitary, which is really bright, but also of the anterior pituitary. And this usually decreases at about two months. And with that, I'm going to end and we're going to continue with the anterior pituitary and adenomas in the next brain bit by bit. So I do hope you will stay tuned.